This is the spreadsheet that I'm going to use to analyse my data. At the moment, it's got data from a previous experiment in it. I'm going to import the, my data, the background counts, and the data that I want to analyse, and the spreadsheet will manipulate that and produce a graph that we can use to measure the half-life from. So, uh, I'm going to import the background data first, and as I do the various steps, I'll explain how the spreadsheet actually works. So go to the background tab here. Uh, this, is, this is the memory stick, and I have my background CSV file, and data4 was the file with the data from the experiment that I conducted. So I need to import my data here. It's going to have all the time values down here, and the counts per 10 seconds down here. This layout is the same for the real data as well. Over here, this will automatically update. This is the average for the counts per 10 seconds down this column. So we'll get a value there, which will then be subtracted in the data. And I'll show you where that takes place after I've imported it. So file, import, and I locate the background CSV file that's here. Import that. And I'm replacing data at the selected cell, so that it will replace the existing columns of data there, but all the calculations will take place on that new set of data. So the average is updated to 4.5. Now if I go to where the graph is plotted, we have time being imported and the 10 second count being imported there. And you see in the formula, that we're importing a, a set of data from the input tab, which we'll get to in a moment, and then it's subtracting background E1. So if I go back here, background E1 is this. So that's where the subtraction takes place. It subtracts the background count from the data of my experiment. Okay, speaking of which, let's actually import that data now. So you can see that the layout for where I'm importing the data is exactly the same. So let's import that data now, the, the uh, data for the experiment, which is data form file. So I import that, and I'm replacing data at the selected cell again. Okay, so I now have my data here. This is the raw data here. So how does this spreadsheet actually work? So over here, you, well, you can see in the raw data that the, the counts per 10 seconds is repeated and then it updates every after 10 seconds. So this initial count here is not relevant because I started mid 10 seconds, if you like, when I was collecting on the data logger. So the, if we start at 4.8, we go down to 14.8, that's when the count updates. So that after 10 seconds, the count updates. What this column will do is it looks in there and after it gets to 10 seconds, which is every 21 rows, it pulls out the value. Now, I need to get rid of this initial count here for two reasons. Firstly, it's mid 10 second count. I just want full 10 second counts. But secondly, that was, you can see the count is much lower than the count that comes after that. And the reason for that was, as I was explaining whilst I did the experiment, that the protactinium was still floating to the top. So the amount of protactinium being presented to the GM tube was increasing, and therefore we got an increasing count. We needed to wait until that had happened before we actually start analysing that data. So I'm going to cut that that count out so it's a legitimate set of data and then we'll see that the 10 second counts will on on the whole start to decrease so I'm going to start my selection at the 4.8 here select this and then select the whole set of data let's select across and then jump down I'm just copying that and then pasting it over the data from zero Okay, and then we get our 10 second counts that we want now. I'm just going to scroll down and delete the repeated data at the bottom from where I've copied and pasted. So that data is repeated, we don't need that.
Okay, now we have our data. So I've pulled out these counts for 10 seconds. This then collapses that down. So wherever we have a new reading, this, these two columns here, they take the time and the corresponding reading and just give us that set of data. So whether the reading is being repeated because we haven't yet got to the next 10 second interval, that data is ignored because that's not new information. So we're just getting the new information here. And then I'm starting at 4.8 seconds, as you can see, but I want to, where, where I actually start my graph, I want to call that T0. So this column takes the time and subtracts the top value. So it subtracts 4.8 from everything. And that way we get T0. So everything's counting up from there. Okay, that is my data. The graph tab here, that just gets the two final sets of data and subtracts the background count. So it's just extracting from this table here and repeating it here so we can see the table of data next to the graph. And then the graph is looking at that and plotting it. So we have our plots and we have an exponential trend line. The exponential trend line is averaging, is an exponential average over all of the data plots and we're gonna use that to measure the half-life. You can see for reference, I have the half-life of protactinium 234M, which is a particular isotope we're investigating with this experiment. The half-life is 70.2 seconds, so we'll see how close we are to that. I won't do any calculations, we'll just comment on how close we are. Okay, I need to, I'm missing some data here. I need to find out what my initial count value was. So I just need to extend the y-axis maximum to include that. So I'll go up to 90 counts per 10 seconds, and then I'll use that to determine my, where the, where the y-intercept is. So I'm changing the vertical axis at maximum, setting that to 90. But then of course, I need to change the number of steps on the grid lines. So this needs to increase to 10. So we should have, yeah, it's going up 10 steps there, that is fine. Okay, now, now I have a graph that I can use. So I've got the y-intercept. What I'm going to do now is take a screenshot of the graph, turn it into a PDF, send that over to my iPad so I can actually write on the screen, and then I'll start taking some measurements from the graph. Okay, this is the graph that you just saw on my laptop. Now here it is on the iPad. So job number one is to determine this y-intercept value. So I would make that be 83. That's the nearest half all square, that's fine. And now I need to measure the half-life. So I'm gonna look for the amount of time for the isotope to half. But I'm not gonna do it for just one half-life. Whenever you're doing graph work, you want to measure multiple of the quantity you're interested in wherever possible. And it is possible here. You can see if half is just over 40, um, I'm gonna get a few half-lives in there. So let's do that for three or four half-lives. Uh, I'll give it a go with four. So what I'm gonna do is get a calculator. And I take my initial value, let's get a calculator that works. Even that one well. Okay. So I take my initial value, 83, divide it by 2, and I do that four times so that I can, I've got the value for four half lives worth of data. So. Okay, so after four half-lifes, K 
count zero was 83. So count after four half-lifes, it should be 5.2. So I want to look along here for where the graph meets 5.2. So it's going to be over here somewhere. So there are 10 small squares, or two, 10 small divisions per large one. So five, this is, this is 10 here. So one, two, three, four, five, and over here somewhere. So I said 5.2, 5 5.2, 5 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's just under six. So I think that's gonna be that one. That's just on five, so I think actually that that increment there, just after the two fifty. Oh, hang on a minute. So this is five point two, and there are ten increments going along here. One large increment is fifty, so this each one of these is five. That makes that two sixty. Two hundred sixty seconds. Okay, so what I know now is that four half-lives is equal to 260 seconds. That means that the half-life is equal to 260 over four. So 260 over four, well, divided by two is 130, and it's 65 seconds. And that is my half-life. So that's five second, 5.2 seconds shy of the value, the data book value. <coughs> and that, so it's not, it's not too bad, reasonable, but you can see there is a fair bit of scatter and that's due to the random nature of radioactive decay. That, you know, it doesn't happen regularly as uh, our theory might expect to do. So that is the experiment to determine the half-life and how I've crunched the data and analysed it and measured the half-life. The important thing I want you to remember from this is to measure multiple of the quantity that you're interested in. Thank you.